Hello community! Yesterday we ended here with part one, but now I want to show you something that really amazed me. Because, you know, at the end of every discussion, I asked a GPT system like here for Omni to write a concise mathematical summary. And this mathematical summary is exactly the object that I store in my repos. So, let's have a look what happened. And this is the output here by GPT-4 Omni. Yeah, this was the Omni one. Problem formulation. Entity group construction via the similarity function. The intra-group and the inter-group reasoning. How we do this. For the inter-group reasoning, we have this formula. For the multi-hop reasoning and the veracity extrapolation, we go here with a total veracity score for the multi-hop chain computed in this way. Then we have the counterfactual reasoning, simple. And then finally, we have the answer generation. Stop. Did you notice what happened? If you read the paper and you understand the way the authors approach this, and then you see this generated here by OpenAI, I said, hey, I said, hey, you say that there is the veracity function that scores the overall quality of the reasoning chain, considering both the knowledge graph-based facts and the LLM's parametric knowledge. Where does this veracity function come from? Because I can't remember to see this veracity function in the original work by the authors. And ChatGPT 4.0 comes back, Omni comes back, and this is here a screenshot. And it tells me here, and I have a little bit of a system prompt a little bit more advanced, tells me, yeah, the concept of veracity function in a technical description is not explicitly present in the original paper. Instead, it was an abstraction I introduced to help explain the process of evaluating the reliability of relationships within the graph-inspired veracity extrapolation framework. Now, up until now, Every time I ask an AI system to come up with a mathematically encoded summary of a complete paper, this never happened to me. I always got the exact same mathematical formulas that were in the paper. This is the first time that now this 4 Omni in the new version comes back and tells me, hey, give me our discussion and whatever, I now invent a new mathematical function to help explain this, let's say in a better way than the authors did. Not present in the original paper is the first time I see this. And I just see this because the term veracity function, I don't recall that I've read it. So, and GPT-4 Omni goes on and says, where does the veracity concept comes from? And it gives an explanation. And Omni tells me the abstraction of the veracity function I mentioned. And it says, I introduced this as a theoretical construct to describe how GIF evaluates the truth. A function that I introduced tells me my AI system, this is, this is a new level. This is something I don't know if I'm confident with. So our little GPT-4 Omni comes alive and says, hey, I introduce a new concept. But it doesn't stop here, you know, because then I say, hey, listen, Omni, your veracity score term, this is not found in the original PDF. Where do you take it? Because this is now suddenly a second mathematical term that is not in the original paper. And damn, I want just a technical summary in a mathematical notation. And ChatGPT4 Omni comes back and says, you are correct. <laughs> the term veracity score and the related veracity function are not found in the original GIF paper. These terms were a conceptual abstraction I introduced to help explain give. Now call me whatever you like, but if this is the first time an AI tells me, hey, I created a new conceptual abstraction, 
And I introduced this here to help explain this in a mathematical form. I mean, I know that for Omni can write Python code and C++ and whatever. But I thought code writing would be restricted to code base. But now I see that after an hour of discussion or more, suddenly this GPT system tells me, hey, the work by the scientist, you know, <laughs> I thought about this and I thought I introduced new conceptual abstraction to help it explain better to you, stupid human. And I, the stupid human, I hardly even notice this because it makes sense. This is not some, some hallucination. This is really a mathematical formula that if I look at it, I say, yeah, th that makes sense if I read it. Because I completely trusted ChatGPT for Omni here that it would reproduce the original mathematical formula of the paper. And this is the first time I noticed that for Omni comes back and says, hey, you know, I just created some conceptual new abstraction that I introduce here. But it makes sense, and this is what really shocks me, you know. And then that GPT-4 Omni comes back and says, hey, why did I introduce the concept? And I'm not sure if I like if, if 4 Omni tells me, hey, why I introduced this? I mean, you should ask a human you know, before modifying here the mathematical content of the paper that you were asked to summarize. So now I know that whenever I ask for a summarization, maybe I do not get the original paper and the original formula and the original reasoning path, but maybe I get new concepts invented by the AI. And I'm not telling you that this is a pure hallucination. It is somewhere between a hallucination transforming into a real new mathematical formula that made sense in the first time I read it. So, clarification. The paper does not explicit calculate a veracity score, a veracity function. <laughs> Instead, it refers to simple relationship, you know. <laughs> I hope this clears up any confusion. My goal was to provide an understandable and structured explanation of the combination of a knowledge base, facts and LLM reasoning structure. The terms I introduced were meant as conceptual tools rather than a direct reference from the paper. Now, this blows me away. This is something where if I would not have been that careful, my goodness. I mean, I love it on the one side that here Omni tells me, you know, something that could conceptually happen. I introduced this as a new idea in a summary. But buddy, tell me that you are doing this because finding out here the first time is real interesting. And I mean, think about the statement of an AI system that comes back to me here for the first time that I notice it and tells me, you know, human, this was my interpretation rather than a direct feature of the scientific paper that you asked me to summarize. So now AI, and I work with GPT systems here and a little bit with Google system. I know now that now GPT tells me, hey, this was my interpretation. I think it's fascinating. And then I say, okay, Mr. Smartass. Okay, since you introduced now here this term of veracity function, show me the mathematical formula of this function. Show me its dependencies and explain every term in this function. And your veracity function must be in perfect harmony with all the other mathematical formula in the original paper by the human authors. Otherwise, buddy, my little four omni, you are in deep trouble. And ChatGPT comes back and says, hey, I understand the importance of precision. I mean, I, I love these responses, I have to tell you. Especially in mathematical formulation, that ensure that the introduction of a concept like a veracity function integrates seamlessly with the existing framework described in the paper by, given by the human. So let's construct a veracity function. <laughs> you know, I would never have this self-confidence, you know, that somebody 
calls me here in, in a presentation says, you know, the function that you introduced, I, I, I never have heard of this function before. And I say, hey, no problem. Let's construct this function that complements the core idea of a relationship in Freerance and the entity grouping in GIF. And you know, for the next half hour, I had the fun of my life because this stupid machine really constructed here a veracity function and reading it and interacting with it, I was not able to find any error or any inconsistency with the formula given in the original paper by the human. So I just finished now this YouTube video. I uh, put it online for you to enjoy. And then I suppose in the afternoon, I will spend some hours going step by step now through each and every mathematical formula. And I'm, I'm interested myself, is this really now possible? I mean, I know that Cursor can write beautiful code. And I know here that O1 is here beautiful in reasoning. But is ChatGPT for Omni 9, this new version, really so powerful that it takes the older idea of coding and here codified knowledge and new function definitions and brings this over to a technical summary of a scientific paper, mainly written in text. And when asked to do a summary with mathematical formula, can build mathematical formula out of this non-trivial text? I'm loving it. I am loving it. Yeah, this is the official algorithm for a GIF as given by the authors. You see, it's a little bit different. So this will be my afternoon. Yeah. I want to show you a third paper. Also published here the very same day, October the 11th, 2024. And this is here, Vanderbilt University, University of Oregon, University of Illinois, and Air Force Research Lab. They now go exactly here for this uncertainty aware perspective. So what they want is, hey, we have this beautiful combination here of LLMs with our knowledge graph, this frameworks lack, they argue, they argue, some rigorous uncertainty estimation. And I understand this because you might ask, hey, is your answer really 99% sure or is it just 78%? Maybe you're right, you know? So they introduce a new framework and they call it an uncertainty aware knowledge graph reasoning framework which incorporates now uncertainty quantification into this symbiosis here of an LLM with a knowledge graph in the framework. So if you want to read about uncertainty quantification, I would say this is a highly, highly difficult topic, you know, because it is, if you read this paper, you see that this uncertainty quantification depends massively on how you interpret what is uncertainty in different domain-specific distribution. But I think it is interesting to read because it has some brand new idea that you say, I want to have a certainty certification or an uncertainty certification to each answer given to me by an AI machine. Because if I would have this already integrated here in this answer by 4Omni, then 4Omni would give me here maybe, hey, and the uncertainty classification or the quantification here might be below 90% because, you know, this is something that could conceptually happen and it was just my interpretation, tells me OpenAI, rather than a direct feature. So I hope that this uncertainty quantification term would be visible here with, uh, I don't know, certain indicator. So you see, the area, the field of AI is absolutely fascinating. Every day something new happens. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a little bit of fun. I thought it was just fascinating. I wanted to show you this, what I discovered. And it would be great to see you in my next video.